A Thousand Miles, Chapter 6, Lost. Emmy and Dusty followed the stars and walked north. Emmy, we have got have gone three or four miles by now. Let's stop and rest for the night. We've put distance between ourselves and the soldiers. We haven't gone that far. We've been moving uphill, so it just feels farther. I can't see the campfires or hear anyone. Dusty, they've got horses. If they even think they hear or see something, they'll be on us in minutes. We could crawl up a tree and sleep. Amy shook her head. They could spot us for sure. I'd rather hide low in a cave or in the underbrush. An owl flew past their heads. Emmy jumped. <sighs> I didn't see that coming. See, I told you. Let's stop for the night before we become something's dinner. Fine, Emmy agreed. Let's look for a hiding place. They walked farther. Dustu, I hear running water. Do you? Dusu stopped walking and paused to listen. Yes, sounds like a stream. I think we should find a place near the stream. Then we'll have fresh water if we need it. And we circled the area looking for cover. How about this crop of rocks? There are shrubs. We can curl up to stay warm, Dusu suggested. Okay. They had each thought to bring a blanket. They wore them like cloaks over their shoulders. Wrap the blanket around yourself. There you go. Now lean into me, Dusu instructed Emmy. They rested their backs against the boulders. Throughout the night, they heard a bone-chilling scream. What is it? Emmy whispered, frightened by the screaming. Are the soldiers killing people? Dusu listened to the echoes of the scream. No, he paused, unsure if he could tell Emmy the source of the sound. He decided not to lie to her. It's a mountain lion. They sound like a woman screaming. Emmy shivered. That sounds close. Too close. Mm hmm Dustu agreed. It could be miles away. Sound echoes through these mountains. What if it's not? What if it's stalking us? Well, Papa said you'll never even know if a mountain lion has its sights on you. You'll be dead in a flash as soon as it pounces. Stop, Dustu. I'm scared. The mountain lion's screams filled the air again. Let's find some rock or branches to use in case it finds us. Staying close to one another, Emmy and Dustu walked around in the dim moonlight, scratching the ground to loosen boulders and kick up tree branches. Do you think we have enough? Emmy asked, her apron loaded with rocks. I hope so. Let's go back to where we were hiding and make a little fort. They surrounded themselves in the underbrush with a large boulder to their backs. Well, a lion can't attack us from behind here. We should see it coming, Emmy said as she looked into the forest. I'm worried about overhead. Those lions can spring longer and faster than deer. One could land right on top of us. I wish we had Papa's gun, Emmy whispered. Deuce two nodded. Me too. We'll have to make the best of it. Put some rocks in your hands. If a lion finds us, throw the rocks right at its head. Try to scare it off. Deustu and Emmy huddled together. The mountain lion's scream started again. It's getting closer, Emmy whispered. It's louder. I think so too. Get your rocks ready. Whatever you do, don't run. It'll think you're prey. Within minutes, Deustu and Emmy could hear soft footsteps on the leafy forest floor. Scratch, scratch, scratch. Something large was digging in the forest. Emmy looked at Dustu. He nodded. It was definitely a lion. Emmy raised her hand to throw a rock, but Dustu stopped her hand in midair. He wanted to wait to see if the lion would keep walking. Emmy put her hand down and took a deep, slow breath. The mountain lion let out a wail. Goosebumps stood up on in the skin. The mountain lion was now just within a few yards of them. Dustu jumped up. He shrieked and roared through one, two, three rocks at the mountain lion, waved his arms in the air. Roar, roar. One of the rocks hit its target. The lion whined and jumped back in fright. Emmy, now, throw. Emmy hurled a rock at the large cat. The rock hit the cat squarely in the top of its head. With that, the cat bolted away. Dustu exclaimed. I think that cat got the message. What if it comes back tonight? It might, but you know how the saying goes, curiosity killed the cat, Dustu chuckled. He felt pretty proud of himself for scaring away a mountain lion. We have a handful of rocks left. I'm going to find some more just in case. Amy gathered a few more rocks. She was careful not to venture too far from the makeshift fort they created. For the rest of the night, Dustu and Amy listened for the mountain lion's return. By dawn, they had finally fallen asleep. Gunshots woke them soon after. Dustu jumped. Emmy, get up. Somebody's out there. Emmy looked petrified. Hide, Dustu ordered her. He drove, dove under the bushes and motioned for her to follow him. What if it's one of the soldiers? Shh, be still. 
They heard a man's footsteps. It sounded as if the man was dragging something large and heavy. Hey, you there, a voice shouted and Deustu in Emmy's directions. We didn't spot it, Deustu whispered. Get out and show yourselves, the voice said. Emmy and Deustu crept out from the bush. Henry Alden, how did you find us? Emmy said, surprised. I followed your trail. The blankets that you carried left a hollowed out track. Deustu dropped his head in his hands. You're going to either shoot us or turn us in. Deustu saw the rifle Henry had strapped to his back. True, you are deserters, runaways who disobeyed the law. Henry paused. But I'm not going to do either. Then what the heck are you doing, doing out here? Deustu asked. Father noticed that you two weren't around your parents. He grew suspicious. So he sent you out hunting, Deustu concluded. Not exactly. I decided to find you myself before one of the soldiers gets to you. Now that you found us, what are you planning? I'm going to sneak you back onto the march so no one notices that you weren't there all along. But your father knows. Yes, but fresh venison will help him forget about the two of you. Henry stepped aside. They could see a large, freshly killed buck behind Henry. That explains the gunshots, Deustu thought. Amy spoke up. We're supposed to go back and pretend this didn't happen? Of course and just keep walking to Indian territory as prisoners, surrender, give up all hope for freedom? Listen, Henry explained, father knows you're gone. He'll send out an official search party before too long. When those soldiers catch up to you, they'll shoot you, point blank. Emmy gasped. I'm just trying to save your lives and get you back to your parents. I'll sneak you in, I promise. Deustu was upset. What about our freedom? Deustu, do you want to live or die? Those soldiers are ruthless. I don't want to be shot, Deustu, Emmy said. Fine, take us back to the march, Henry. But if this is a trick, I will kill you with my bare hands, Deustu said, his low voice brimming with fear and anger. Come on, they're only a mile away. It won't take long. A mile? Emmy asked. Yes, you two traveled in circles as far as I can tell from your tracks. Henry dragged the deer along behind him. As they got closer to the trail, they could hear soldiers barking commands at the Indians. They could see the soldiers from behind the trees. All right, Deustu, Emmy. When the last soldier on the white horse goes by, just slip into the back of the line. Walk there for a time, then slowly make your way up to your parents. Don't draw attention to yourselves. Deustu and Emmy waited. The soldier on horseback trotted by. They slid into the line as if they never left. I can't believe they gave up that easily, Deustu grumbled. I don't think that we had a choice. Mama wants us to keep our tribe alive, not to be sacrificed like wild animals. They continued to walk, slowly making their way up the line. Emmy saw Mama and Papa before too long. When Emmy walked up behind Mama, she reached out for her hand. She took Mama's hand in her own. Mama jumped in surprised. You two were supposed to be gone, whispered Mama. Henry found us. His father realized we were missing. Henry captured you? No, we came willingly. Henry said the soldiers would shoot us and kill us if they found us. Mama looked disappointed. She had dreamed of their freedom. Papa spoke up. I wish you had gotten away. Me too, Dusu said. But if they kill us, then our tribe suffers. You said so yourself. The families marched eight more hours that day, 10 more the next. Bloodied and dirtied, hundreds of Indians reached Chattanooga. A throng of other people met the band of Cherokee in Chattanooga. Now, what do you think? Do you think that Dustu and Emmy made the right decision coming back with Henry? Or do you think they should have kept going and tried to make it on their own, knowing that Captain Alden knew that they were gone? Do you think that they're safe with their family or that they should have kept going? What's your opinion?